kid to shine and they want him to play on, on a better competitive level or, or they think they're not going to get better if they play, you know, under the best level that they can possibly play on. And that's not true. And, and, and like, sometimes you just got to let things happen for itself, right? You know what I mean? Like, if your now, kid is good enough and has a passion to be a, 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 a I can promise you it'll happen. Now I'm going to argue the other side. Since you coach girls, and I know you know the numbers aren't quite right with the girls, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. St- I'm surprised even they have an A in the field. So if they go in there that way, and they, and they have the girls. So the main problem I've seen, I've coached a B-League team before, is sometimes you do get one or two kids that really want to be out there, and they, they're talented enough to play in the A-League, but the A-League may be stacked already with, you know, 10 kids that are as good or, you know, some of them better than, than the actual player. So what happens is they get stuck in the B-League, and you get 10 kids on, the, say, a basketball or B-League team. You get 10 kids. He's listening to him. He's in the bathroom. You might hear him piss in the background. You get 10 kids that are stuck in a B-League team, and six of them don't want to be there. Their parents drag them out every night to practice. They get stuck in the game. These kids are trying to play, and these other kids are just standing around because their parents are making them come out every other night to practice. So what I, my my question is, what's your answer to, to something like that? Say if I have a kid or you have a kid that's talented enough to make the marginal A-League team, you know, mar, you know, he could, could maybe be a seventh or eighth man on the A-League team, but get pushed down to the B League where they're the best player, and all of a sudden they got to carry a team of eight kids that don't want to be there. So, well, you got to come over here and give me your answer. You can't, you can't say it from the from the depths of the toilet. So I tried to explain it as long as I could, but you piss longer, you piss longer than Ogre does in Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> So you saying this podcast is as good as Forrest Gump? That's what I'm talking about. I'm waiting for somebody else to give me an answer. So check this out. In that point, in that position, like it really depends on what your kid wants. Really, I I mean, what what are you supposed to do? Because does your kid want to? Do I mean? Like it's tough. Like, do you do you think your kid's good enough to play at a high level, and they just need to sit in the bench, with you know, be on the A bench and work their way up the ladder? So, well, or did your kid, or, or did they just have fun? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's that, that that's the argument right there. Is could you say, would you rather your kid star in the B league or ride the bench in the A league? But do you think they getting better reps at practice? In the A league, than it would be in a game. Depends on the coach. In a B league, that depends on the coach. Like just because you just because your kids in the A league doesn't mean that they got the best coach. Like true, it's daddy ball in A league. It's daddy ball and travel ball all over the place. Right, that's just so watered down. Don't mean nothing. Like the best coach, like guy guys that have no ego about coaching. Like, they know what they've done in the past, and they know what they can do. They don't need to win kind of attitude. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of them will take the lower grade just to to work on the basics and make them better rather than worry about winning. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so the best coaches doesn't necessarily mean the best players. So what's your answer to this question? So – Hypothetically speaking, your kid is the bottom of the A league or the star of the B league. Where would you rather your kid? Depends on the coach. Honestly, depends on the coach. Depends like, on. like if if I know they got a they gonna learn coach during the B league ball and they and they have a guy that's gonna actually teach them in the B league. Right. See, I've always I look. I've had an A-League team and a B-League team. I enjoyed coaching the B-League team more than the A-League team. And, and, and what I used to do was I'd pick kids that never played before. So at least I knew ball. I had a shot. It's more fun. You know, like it's rec ball. The A-League, some <laughs> of them guys, just because they got a capital letter A in front, 
the team. Right. Think you know they all have that mentality well, most, that is most of these dads live through their die. kids. Most of these dads that coach a league or, or travel ball, right. they try and, to live and, through and, their you know, kids. And, and honestly, I'm going to do what you just did. It's really not like I don't know how I can say living through your kids kind of thing. Exactly. Is not so much a bad thing because most people do it. Like living through, what is the definition of living through your kids? Like a lot of people do it because they, you know, like a lot of coaches coach because they like being on the floor and they like being competitive. They love the, the you know, the thought of competition. So it's basically about what do you want? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to be, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't let, um, that passion ruin your decision making. You understand what I'm saying? This is living through your kids, bro. A lot of dads are line their kids up in a fucking know, quarterback, right? To get their fucking head knocked off, just so they can take pictures of their just kids so they can take pictures of my kids scored two touchdowns and I don't today. Mean that. And they like, don't need to be out there. Like that's what I'm saying. Like you got to put your kid in the best place available. And you gotta treat your you gotta hold your kid accountable and sometimes you gotta hold them even to a higher standard than you hold the rest of the players on the team just to prove to to win the team. You understand what I'm saying? To win the hearts of, See, do you of think, everyone involved. Do you think Doc Rivers holds his kid higher? Higher uh, standard than everybody Fuck, else on the Clippers? Know, yeah, right. <laughs> well, we all got a job to do at that point. I mean, they are all getting paid. Then, like, yeah. that's, Dude, that's, that's crazy. Different. You ever think that you, you, you'd have a, uh, a, a someone would play for their dad? Their dad would be coaching them. How do you think the rest is of the that Clippers the fir- is that like the first time in history that that's ever? This may have happened before, but uh, it's the first time I've ever seen it. You know, it may happen like the '30s and '40s. You know. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, and, and since cable TV. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, first time you see a kid playing for his dad. I know a kid and a dad. The Griffies played together. They Ken did. Griffey Jr. That's played awesome. with his dad. Yeah, they did. For like a that's year right. or two, yeah. Senior. Dude, that's how long you can play baseball. Dude, that's why. That's I, how long you can that's play That's why baseball. If, I, if, if, if my kid was a good athlete, I, I would steal any good athlete to baseball. You could play for fucking 18 years. I, and that's, that's the other. It's the money. That's it's the, the money. Other, and it's the money. But, but it's just the longevity of the sport. And right. that's the other subject that I want to bring you to before we leave tonight. The thing is, is you get caught up like the entertainment value of baseball is not. Let's let's talk. Let's talk pigs again. It's it's part three. It's number three in the country. We in part three of this podcast right now live. You didn't started the live feed again. Yeah, we ain't got much time. I got to, well, let's let's. I get got here. the roll, bro. Well, let's get here before you go, up. bro. Let's get here before you. They off of school. They can stay out late. Uh, no, the woman's got to work tomorrow. Bro. I got to pick the kids up. Well, let me ask you this, bro. I was listening to this podcast today about it was the, the San Francisco 49ers football player that retired. He retired at like 24 years old because he's worried about concussions and, and, and CTE and, and all that stuff. And uh, he said on the podcast, and a lot, of, and I've heard this a few times before, that kids shouldn't play tackle football until they're 15 years old. And the way that Football is played today is it's so spread out, like even college football is so spread out that they run into pretty much flag football offenses. Like kids should be playing flag football. And you see even with Drew Brees. Drew Brees runs his own flag football league for kids. So what is your opinion on football, kids not being able to play tackle football until they're 15 years old? I wish the burner was here to give his opinion. I think it's a great idea. I don't see anything wrong with that. If you want to hit, if you want to teach your kids how to hit in the in the backyard to get them ready ahead of, that's your business. But I think the later you inquire hitting, and I think if everybody follows the same suit, I think she's gonna be just fine for the sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like teaching the proper tack, you know, tackle techniques. You don't have to have another kid a, there they, to do it. Like, use your head without using your head. You understand what I'm saying? Like, because our, our brains, like, 
dog, you can't rattle your brain. But like, there's it's not you, you beat your head up against the wall all day long and see how you feel. But there's certain positions on the field that no matter how great your technique is, you a middle linebacker, you flying so fast right. to the ball. It's just like the kickoff. Just like the Pittsburgh Steelers player. He's flying so fast to the ball. Not that he had bad technique. It's just he got caught in the wrong place at the wrong it's time. It's going to happen. You're not going to change that. You're, I don't, you're not going to legislate that out of the game. You're horse playing. My, my kids say, your parents say, you better stop that fucking horse playing. You're going to break something. Right. It's going to happen, bro. Injuries are going to happen, dog. It's going to happen. It's not going to be intentional, even though we're all, like, all we can, all they can do, if football is going to stay around, all you can do is constrain it the best you can. And I think the NFL is doing a good job of trying to fix that problem. Yeah, And that's all you can well, do. Well, you know they not. They, and it's all judgment calls. You know they're not going to approve of uh, no tackle football until 15 years old. Right. And you know there's going to be high school teams that, in Louisiana. And, and here's the thing. John Curtis ain't approving here's of that shit. This is how tough it is. It's like it's judgment call. Throw the flag because you thought you saw it. All right. Can you go back to the replay and pick the flag up? If we do, then teams are going to go back and practice how to make sure we pick the flag back up is with the referee. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they're just going to continue to flag it and let it be to make sure because safety comes first. Fuck your 15 yards. I got to make sure that y'all go home to your families. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's that, And, that, and it's not going to change. It is what it is. So – and then he said the other thing he said was that there's there's really no place that five, six, seven year old kids should be tackling each other outside and, and, and risking you know, risking themselves at full speed. Kids are gonna be kids at that point. Like kids are gonna That's kind of how I see it. Kids you can't stop that. Like when we were kids, we like, we played tackle football. No. But we had no helmet. That's what I'm <laughs> we saying. had no pads. That's what I'm saying. And in in with that, and you know what's, I watched a video and it makes sense about tackle football. There's a league that plays tackle football. Diddy ain't buying the Panthers. There's a league that plays tackle he just football to start on without helmets. There's a league out there. That yeah, they, I've seen that. And they in because it makes you think about your head. They probably like, don't. You run don't have though. that. It's. Wearing a helmet to some is perceived as a weapon. You understand what I'm saying? Because right. I got the helmet on. But if you take the helmet off, uh-huh. you're trying to protect your head the whole time you're out there. So I'm kind of skeptical about that league because how many collarbones break? Do you know if you ran well, full well, speed across that yard and I tackled you right now, I'd break think my collarbone? About, think about playing it. Tackle football, pads, no helmet. Think about the guy that loses his helmet. He can play. He can he's still play. conscious of protecting his yeah. head the whole time he's playing. I'd be worried about my collarbone if I didn't have no no pads. No pads, or right? Hips. Right, right. I mean, but but that's a lot. That's a great conversation, and that's a lot of things to think about. No, no, I'm not saying it should go away, bro. I'm Make just, you I'm conscious of your helmet now. Now, where this is going to come into play is like special teams, open field, booking down field. Everybody's running full head of steam with pads and no helmet. Now the, it's gonna happen. We're gonna collide. Brewer, We're gonna Brewer collide. Brought up, Brewer brought up jujitsu. Now I, my I go to my son's jujitsu class, so it's the only it's the only class I see. And he says, you know, four year olds do jujitsu. Jujitsu, how they practice jujitsu over there, it's pretty close range. It's not it's not uh someone coming ten yards across the field to hit a you know, hit a kid. You know, uh, running the ball, that trying to run the ball through the sidelines. Jiu-jitsu is me and you about this far apart from one another and me trying to take each other down. And then when we take each other down, we're trying to submit one another or try to get into a, a you know, a, so, kind of a side guard. And I'm speaking like I know what I'm talking about, which I don't. <laughs> or, you know, I'm trying to mount them, trying to mount somebody. Whereas tackle football, them kids at five or six years old, they're trying to run the edge, not – I've seen it with Ethan. We we coach together. Kids get blasted, right? You know, just just 
Well, in them, them ages, kids get caught sleeping a lot. My quarterback got hurt. Every other game, he was hurt. We had to pull him out. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of science behind that. But besides that, we going to skate. It's yeah, he got enough go. tonight. I got, but um, we're gonna try this new audio thing. We'll soon. be back. Uh, we got like three, three of these for y'all to watch. We're taking off Sunday. Um, we may do an audio only from a phone using a new app on Sunday before the game. We'd like we're gonna do a pregame. Um, but uh, other than I didn't that, like the video on this one, but go to the other uh live feeds and and check out the video. And uh, this video, I, I didn't have time. I just set it up real oh, quick. So. Anyway, we'll be back the following weekend. Not this weekend coming. The following weekend, we'll be back for. Our we do first. have some guests next month. We got uh, CJ Bird coming in next month. Oh, we, we got, got uh, uh, Angelina coming in next month. Paint uh, the the Angelina Duraisi the paint. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we get Fats again soon. And we and we trying to get Wo back. So, yep. You know, we we gonna see what happens. Hopefully, the, hopefully we can be talking Saints Super Bowl. Anyway, uh, so yeah, wa- watch the video. So it'll be next weekend. Um, we may have a guest in coming. We, we're gonna do a playoff special next weekend. So I, uh, I got you, Brewer. I saved your number last time. So. All right, y'all All right. take it easy. Y'all have a good night. Uh, thank you. Peace.